So Niall, we're, we're here in Monaghan, we were dealing with Oshin there earlier. Mm -hmm. We're at one of your installations here. Yeah. So you're a partner in the business, co-owner? Yeah, myself, myself and Alan Heaney would be joint owners of the business. Yes. So how long has it been in operation? So we set up in April 2012, just the two of us. Um, we had no engineers at the time because we had no customers. Now we're a team of 55 and covering a good chunk of the Republic of Ireland. Yeah, fair play. Covering all, uh, all aspects of farm automation. Yeah, big journey, so big 10 years behind you. Yeah, well, yeah, so in 11 years now. So look, it was uh, a good education. We kind of grew into it. So we, we started small and built our knowledge. Um, very different business now than what we thought it would have been when we, we started planning. Um, the likes of this, the Lely Vector, we, we didn't actually foresee much of a market for that. The majority of our customers are uh, spring calf and grass-based systems, so we've over 600 robots installed in our territory and spring calf and grass-based systems, but the likes of automated feeding has really got traction in the last couple of years, which has been a bit of a surprise. We didn't expect that. Okay. So how have you built a business to 55 people, say? You sold a few robots at the start, or what did you focus on? Yeah, so um, now the majority of our customers, the biggest reason they're automating is labour saving. And um, the increase in building costs has probably helped push more business our way because the build with an automated system tends to be less than, say, a rotary or a big herringbone. So their savings there. And I suppose the market now, a lot of people are looking for automatic drafting, feed to yield, heat detection, health monitoring. So a lot of the options that come as standard with the Lely system people are pricing um, with their parlour and the gap now is a lot less than what it used to be, especially when you take the increased building costs into account. Okay. But I suppose the biggest education, Bertie, and I know you do a lot of this in your own businesses, was around the importance of getting the plan right day one. When we would have uh, started the business, we would have assumed once you have good service and keep the machine serviced and maintained and reliable, that uh, you know, you have happy customers. And we, we found out very quickly that Proper yard planning was critical. You had your, your cow flow and your automatic drafting and your labour efficiency. And then once you had a plan agreed, have an expertise to work with the, the, the tradespeople, the builder, the electrician, the plumber. You know, a lot of things can get lost in translation, translation after you hand over a set of plans. So then we had to invest in um, what we call project coordination. That was critical. Um, on the grazing side, we probably didn't realise the input that was required to get that whole system flowing well. So we now have a, a team of four farm management support advisors to map the grazing blocks and to work with the client for the first couple of years to help them get tuned in on that. So once it's planned properly, installed properly and the client is trained properly day one, it's generally a great success. Okay. And we found is if you get into an area and you have happy customers, you generally in the years that follow, you do a lot more business. Yes, yeah. And I suppose like anything, the product is right, but it's only as good as the people behind it. Look, Lely are at this, um, on the robotic milking side, 32 years. So, like, they've learned a lot. They were the first out the gap, and they've now, since, since 2015, since they sold the, the, the forage equipment, Tyco, they've focused on farm automation and sensor technology. And, like, they would have been very uh, quick to point out, all the system will do is it'll milk the cows and give you information and won't run the business. So a big part of our job is to manage the client's expectations um, and make sure everything's set up properly day one and they're trained properly and they get the support they need when they need it. So for the customers buying in from you is the key that they have, you know, they're comfortable with tech or they're good at grazing beforehand or what, you know, what is the key to success for on the customer side, patience? Um, look, it's probably the grazing. So if we consider our mass market, it's spring calf and grass based system. The tech is user friendly, it's made for farmers not for engineers, so I, I can't think if anyone has an issue using the tech. People grow into that. They don't need to know everything day one. And some farmers only want a certain proportion of the information. So the tech side generally isn't an issue. It's nothing to do with age or experience. People grow into that relatively easily. But managing the grass is critical. There's a way of doing it. Um, it's nothing much different than what the likes of Chagas will be recommending as good practice. But knowing the right covers to go into knowing the covers to skip, knowing how to get a proper graze out is critical. If a person wasn't motivated to manage the grass, a robotic milking system on a grass-based system doesn't work. Okay. So the, the grass management is a critical part, and that's why we've probably invested so much in 
the farm management support side because we know the, some clients need a bit of hand holding year one but once you get them with a full season behind them they generally work well okay and we also have some discussion groups exclusive to robotic um, or robotic milking customers and that's a great way of educating people it's a good well. ecosystem where people are talking about systems they all share and understand well we've eight different groups they're generally well attended um, you know there's guys there with experience of robotic milking in nearly 12 years so I'd say it's a, best, a great way of sharing best practice so look, something like this, it's a, you know, it's not very common in Ireland. I, I think you've what, there's about 13 or 14 systems nationally? Yeah, so there's 13 farms with the Lely Vector currently um, working at the moment. Um, there's 10 to 12 more due to go in. Um, surprisingly a big interest from beef farms. A lot of the commercial beef guys are given this serious consideration because the results coming back are quite positive. These guys, you know, they could be maybe feeding half a million euros worth of feed a year. So they're trying to find ways of how do I get more out of it because yeah. the margin of that business is so, is so tight. Yeah. So th there may be a bigger opportunity for us in Ireland, in our territory, on the beef side than maybe the dairy. Okay. Say in territory then, say what, what area are you covering? So we started out in 2012. Our main territory um, was uh, Connacht and the most the Leinster. Uh, we didn't cover Carlow, Kilkenny, Wexford and Waterford. Um, and Tipperary, but over the last uh, 11 odd years our territory has grown so now we're setting up in Kilkenny as well so we have a team based out of Kilkenny that's salespeople, yard design, project coordination and service so we're making a good inroads in the southeast at the moment. Okay yeah it's a big team to manage. Look we've got a lot of good people we're lucky yeah. we, we've people who were with us a long time they've grown with the business and um, we would be very uh, uh, ambitious in the quality of people that we hire. We, we spend a lot of time interviewing, a lot of time uh, recruiting, and we work hard to, to look after people as best we can. Okay. So as we move on here, so in the shade here, you have three robots? Yeah, three Lely Astronaut a a A5s, two put in originally, and then a, a third one a number of months ago. So that's, um, it's called a head-to-head -head design. Some firms have them in different orientations. So the, the yard designer with the customer kind of work out what's most suitable. So there's different co configurations depending on, uh, on the layout of the farm. Okay. Robot cleaning then, say on, the, on your, your scraper as well, you have a system here for that? So um, what the guys have here is the collector. So it's called the Lily Discovery. There's two options. One option just goes around uh, the basic model, which is a huge seller. We've 700 odd installed now at this point. So it's like you walking around Bertie with a hand scraper for 10 hours a day. It yeah. pushes the muck through the slats. Works really well in the yards that it suits. What the guys have here is the Lady Collector. So that has a vacuum pump. And what that does is sucks up the muck on the solid and either dumps it into a, a pit or it dumps it over the slats. So okay. that's more for yards that are predominantly solid, less, less, less slats. Okay, yeah. Say so, Niall, the role of automation then, say for the next five to 10 years, where do you see it going or where, you know, where do you see Farmers yeah. um, need help on that, or where? I know I would be. Going? I know I'd be biased, Bertie, but um, I foresee in the future there'll be very few manual parlour sold in, in, in the future. I think most people will go with a level of automation. Um, we're very confident in the type of system we have, but the increase in automation is mainly driven by uh, labour. It's very hard find good people and it can be difficult to keep them and people maybe want a better lifestyle and also dairy farmers in particular they're looking for more information on their cows they want to manage them better like what the guys have here every time a cow is milked not only have they her yield they have her butter fat or protein her cell count they're getting a couple of days early notification and she's going to get mastitis you know when she's in heat and the best time of day to serve her so there's a lot of management in uh, bringing a farm to a high level so what the, what the automation does is frees up time and gives these people more information and it's um, maybe helps the farm be more sustainable because you're less dependent on outside labour. Yes I suppose in keeping all this gear going here you have support contracts as well do you in place? Yeah all our clients are on a service contract everyone's on the same service contract so we have a team of 27 engineers which are fully employed so we install our own robots we commission our own robots and we service our own robots so we have our territory divided into three teams and we summon on call 24-7 in each territory. And the general um, routine for the lads is there's three weeks per month where it's scheduled work 
and then one week per month they're on call where we don't schedule any work for them but they're there on the end of the phone if required so okay. if most of the time you can um, fix it over the phone or talk to the client through what to do or log in remotely but if it requires a farm call there's someone available to jump in the van and deal with it I suppose these contracts allow peace of mind to the farmer that ultimately his, his equipment is going to be minded and maintained equally for you to run a business and keep people employed Look, it's, so it's security on both sides we try to be transparent in our business so we like people to have some sort of a feeling what things are going to cost um, and we like to take responsibility for the regular maintenance and in an automated system you can't risk the big periods of downtime you'd have a big you know hold up so the robots are serviced on regular intervals so we would ring up the client and we'd say Bertie your robot is due service B we're looking for next Thursday. Is there anything else we need to look at when we're there? And, and people like the comfort to know, and it's our responsibility to keep things up to date. Yeah. But it also means that if there is a breakdown, which can happen, the engineer going on farm, if, if required, they know that it's not going to be that big of a drama because everything is fairly well updated and, 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 and yeah. kept up to, up to spec. Yeah. And I think it's to prevent the maintenance as well. Everyone's fear is a Sunday morning, isn't that right? In a way that the machine isn't going to work or whatever, but it's been more involved with preventing things like that. Well, we found out very early on in the business that in the early days when we were going quite fast and maybe we weren't recruiting quick enough, if you had clients who your servicing was getting a little bit behind, they were the farmers who were having breakdowns. Yeah. So we kind of realized very quickly, you need to keep, keep everything serviced on time, on schedule, and then your out of hours call outs are minimal. Okay. So you have less work if you just keep the servicing uh, yes. to yeah. the schedule. Yeah. It's peace of mind for everybody then as well. The diagnostics are quite good as well. So every system is connected to the internet. Everything's uploaded every day. So our own team based in uh, Mullingar, they would um, have a system that will raise a flag. If there's a particular client with a system that maybe is, is, is working below par, it might mean that they might move the service forward a little bit because if there's a client that may have a breakdown in the next few weeks, Yes. he's not due for a month, but we'll move it to next week and we'll maybe stop it happening. Yeah. And maybe just to finish in on the project management side, say somebody buys a robot. Yeah. Do they have to engage with the project management? And is that that's a requirement for me? Or yeah, that look that can be odd. The, the the biggest reason we don't maybe do a deal with someone who wants to go down this route is you mightn't have an agreement on the plan. Yeah. The client might say, well, I want to put it there, and if it works there, I'm happy to proceed. And our yard designer might say, well, I'm not happy. We're going to have proper cow flow. You're not going to have a good enough automatic drafting system. I don't think it's going to be labour efficient. And um, you mightn't have agreement and you shake hands and move on. Yes. But even when you do get agreement, it's, it's critical that the people actually are going to prepare the site before our lads come to install that everything's done right. The last thing we want is after someone maybe spending 5, 10, 15, 20,000 on, on groundwork is to come in and start saying, look, oh, we need that knocked or that yeah. move. So yeah. we have um, two full-time project, project coordinators and they're from a construction background and their job then is to obviously the farmer is our client but they deal directly with the concrete yeah. man the shed yeah. man all the different stakeholders so when our install team arrives on site evidence where it should be so we yeah. can generally the likes of the first two robots installed here uh, were put in in less than a week yes. so we can minimize the amount of time on farm by making sure everyone's well organized when we get there okay great and i suppose just when you start up the system then there's obviously a lot of help around that provided yeah, so there's generally, our rule of thumb is two people per robot. Um, so, for example, we started a, a three-robot farm this week. So we'd one lady person per robot and one from the farm. And then what we do is we're on farm uh, 24 hours for the first three days, making sure every cow gets through, the whole system is working properly. Um, and by the second day we're kind of standing back and letting the client get more tuned into it by the third day the client is fairly well tuned into the whole system yeah then we go away for a day we're obviously on the end of the phone but it gives them a chance to kind of yeah. realize what the, the, they might need to check and we're back then yeah so the whole the, um, transition is about a week great yeah but it sounds well controlled look we try to make life easy for ourselves as well as the client so i say over the last 11 odd years we kind of have sort of standard operating procedures in place and we know if we do it a certain way you'll have a good outcome at the end of it and say starting a robot say would you try and start a midweek or do, does, could be at the weekend or do you try and target a particular day in the week or good question so um we normally start on a monday or a tuesday uh we 
rarely, if we don't have the farm started on the Tuesday, we put it off to the following week. What we want is we want a fair length of time to get everything working well before the weekend. To be fair to our own staff as well, to be fair to the engineers on call, yeah. we figure that once you have five days under your belt, you'll be, things should be flowing reasonably yeah. well. Yeah. So you, you don't want to be starting a farm just getting into the weekend. It wouldn't be fair to the client and it wouldn't be fair to our own people. Okay, very good. Well, look, you've had a great, yourself and Alan, a fantastic 10 or 12 years, mm -hmm. building a great business. So continued success to you and wish you the best for the future. Thanks, Bertie. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks.